Hello, in this video, I'm going to go over how you can set up an 8 directional sprite like in the classic Doom games, so you're going to be able to view your enemy or sprite from 8 different angles. I'm going to have some files in my project, so mine may look slightly different to yours, but you can ignore those. And if you want to follow along, I'm going to include this image of this enemy sprite, which I'm going to use in this tutorial video. A link to find this will be in the description of this video. If you do use it, when you import it, just right click on it and go sprite actions and apply paper to the texture settings. That way it looks normal. Then to extract the um, sprites from this image, just right click on it, go sprite actions and extract sprites. Unreal Engine will automatically work out each um, sprite in this image and we can click extract. This will make a sprite out of all of them. And then the final step we need to do is make each of these a flipbook. So what I did is, for example, this one, right click on it, I go create flipbook and then I call this flamethrower underscore f for forward and then do that for the following so for this one i'm going to create a flipbook and call this flamethrower underscore forward left and so on so i'll call this one left back left back back right right and front right so just make sure you create sprites for all of them and make sure that you name them accordingly that way when we reference them it'll be easier and then once you've done all of that just go create a new blueprint class and select character because I make this an enemy in my game then I just call this the base enemy underscore blueprint then we can head inside here and we're ready to start if we go over to components and go add and look for a paper flipbook for the paper flipbook select the flamethrower idle underscore f flipbook that we made earlier and currently right now this is not facing the correct direction if i just select this arrow component this will let me know the forward direction of our base enemy blueprint and currently right now we can see the paper flipbook is not facing forward so we want to make it face forward to do that we can just select the paper flipbook and go over to select and rotate objects and just rotate it 90 degrees in the x-axis now it's kind of small and doesn't fit the capsule. So with this little scale icon checked, let's increase the scale of our paper flip book. I'm gonna make it say 3.5 in all its units. And I think that is looking a bit better. So the idea here is we have eight different flip books for our enemy. And depending on where the player character is positioned and where the enemy is positioned, we're gonna play a different flip book. So if say I'm in front of the enemy, then we're gonna play this front facing flipbook. But if say I am behind the enemy, don't copy this bit, we're gonna play the enemy back flipbook. So this is how I'd see the enemy if I was behind it. So let's set up that system. To do that, we can go over to the event graph and we're gonna hook this up to event tick. So event tick, which will run every single frame, we're gonna make sure that the enemy is showing this correct paper flipbook. In order to do that, we're gonna get the player character's location and the enemy's location. So if we just right click and look for get player character, and from here we can just drag off and look for get actor location. And then if we just right click and look for get actor location, this will just get the location of our base enemy blueprint. And we just wanna drag up here and look for subtract. And we just wanna subtract these two values. Then we just wanna drag up here and look for normalize. And what this normalized node will do is get the unit direction of these values. So this will basically allow us to know if the enemy is in front of us or behind us. Just so that you can see what I mean, I'm just gonna drag off event tick and look for print string and connect this into here. Then to help showcase this example, if you go over to the viewport and go add and look for an arrow and for the details, look for hidden in game and just leave this unchecked and now i'll go compile and save and i close this and i go play so when i'm in front of the enemy we can see the value in the x and the y is positive so that means i'm in front of the enemy however if say i go behind the enemy then the value in the x and the y becomes a negative one maybe kind of hard to see and basically we're going to use that normalize node to help us know if the enemy is in front or behind of us and we can basically use that to help determine what paper flipbooks we should play. 
we can now close this now that I've showcased that example. And then the next thing we need to do, I'm just gonna delete these notes here, is just right click and look for get actor forward vector. And then we just wanna drag up here and look for dot product and connect this into here. So I'm now gonna kind of explain what the dot product node does. It's kind of a bit complex, but I'm gonna explain how it kind of works. Okay, so the dot product takes in two vector values. I'm gonna use an example to showcase how it works. Imagine each vector in the dot product as a car. Now each car has a direction that is facing. Now we wanna find out how much the two cars are facing the same way. To do that, we use the dot product. To find the dot product, we take the first car's vector and multiply it by the second car's vector. We add all of those numbers together and that gives us a single number. That number tells us how much the two cars are facing the same way. If the number is big, then the cars are facing almost the same way. If the number is small, then the cars are facing different ways. So that's how the dot product node works. Next, if we just drag off the dot product and look for ACOS degrees, this will kind of convert the dot product into some degrees. And we're basically gonna use this value to help us determine what flipbook we should play depending on the forward vector of the enemy and the location of the player character and the enemy. If you just right click on this and promote it to a variable and just call this degrees. And just connect this into event tick. After we've done this, we're gonna just right click and look for get actor right vector. And then we just wanna drag off this normalize and look for dot product and just connect this into the bottom one and this into the top one. And then if you just drag off here and look for less than and just leave this at zero and then drag off here and look for branch and connect this into here. So by doing this little calculation, we're basically gonna be able to determine if the player character is on the right or left of an enemy. If this is true, that means we're on the right side of the enemy. If this is false, that means we're on the left side of the enemy. And then this will let us know how many degrees centered we are to the enemy. And by using these two calculations, we're basically gonna be able to determine what flipbook we should play for our enemy, depending where the player character is. I'm just gonna drag off here and look for print string and connect this into here. And I'm just gonna click this little arrow here and make the color of this print string, let's say green. Then I'm also just gonna drag off here again and look for print string and we can connect this into here. And I'm just gonna click compile and play this just so that you can visually see what I mean. So it's print stricken true because I'm on the right side of the enemy and we can see I'm about 88 degrees to the enemy. If say I go to the left side, then it's gonna print string false and we can see I'm about 128 degrees to the enemy. So by doing these calculations, we're gonna be able to determine what side of the enemy we're on and how many degrees we're facing. And this will allow us to determine what flipbook we should play for our enemy. Okay, so we can now delete these two print strings and connect this into here. Off of the true, I want you to drag and look for the compare float node. So we want this one, compare float, and this will basically compare the value of this input with the value here. For the input, we just wanna drag in the degrees variable that we made earlier and look for get degrees and connect this into here. And for this first one, we wanna compare with the number 180. If this value is less than 180, then we just wanna drag up here and look for compare, float, and this time we wanna compare it with the number 135. Again, we wanna copy this degrees and connect this into here. I'm gonna copy these nodes again and paste them here. And this time we wanna compare it with the number 90. Then we wanna copy this one last time. And this time we wanna compare it with the number 45. And we just wanna copy all of these nodes. And we wanna do the same thing for the false. So just connect that into here. Next, so depending on the degrees and the number, we're basically going to make the paper flipbook play a certain flipbook. So we may make it play the forwards, backwards, forward right, or forward left. Before setting the flipbook, 
we basically need to set the rotation of our flipbook. Otherwise, it won't look correct. To showcase what I mean, I'm going to go over to the viewport. And let's say I just select my paper flipbook and change this to be the flamethrower idle underscore left. The arrow basically lets me know the forward direction of this enemy. And currently, we can see it's not facing the correct direction. If, say, I was towards the left, so the player was facing the left of the enemy, this is how it look, and it looks kind of weird. So we need to make sure that the flipbook is kind of rotated, say, let's say, minus 180 degrees in the z-axis. That way, when the player character views the enemy from the left, they're looking at the enemy with the correct flipbook, and it looks all normal and correct. So before we change the flipbook of our enemy, we're going to actually change its rotation so that we can view it correctly. If you go over to the event graph, I've already made all the calculations for what angle we need to view each sprite at. So to get started, in some free space, just drag in the paper flipbook and just drag up here and of course set relative rotation. Then for this first one in the Z, put a value of minus 90 and just drag off here and look for print string and just make this say front. So when we are viewing our enemy from the front, we're basically going to make it have a rotation of minus 90 degrees. And we're also going to set it so the flipbook is playing the front flipbook animation. Whilst we're here, we're going to set up our flipbook system. If you just go create new variables and just call this flipbooks, and here under variable type, if you look for flipbooks and select paper flipbook and select object reference, then if you click this little button here and just change this to be an array, by making it an array, that basically means this variable can hold multiple values. Just go compile and add eight array elements. Copy this in the order that I'm doing this. For the first one, we want this to be the flamethrower idle underscore F. Then we want the flamethrower idle underscore FR. Then we want the flamethrower idle underscore left. Then we want the flamethrower idle underscore back left. I kind of misspelled mine. Then we want the flamethrower idle underscore back then we want the flamethrower back right then we want the flamethrower right and then we want the flamethrower front left and i'm actually just going to rename this and call this flipbooks idle so these are all the idle animations of our enemy okay so after we set the um, relative rotation of our enemy to minus 90 degrees, this means our enemy is facing forwards. And so we'll make our flipbook play the forward flipbook. To do that, just drag in the paper flipbook and just drag off here and look for set flipbook. And then the flipbook will set it to, if we just drag in the flipbook idols that we made and just drag off here and look for get a copy. And for the number, just leave this at zero because for our flipbook idol, Whoop, let me just compile this again. For our zero number, that is where we play our flamethrower idle forward animation. Just connect the nodes here. And then I'm just gonna copy and paste this seven more times. Okay, for the second one, we want this to have a Z of 45 and you just wanna call this front right and make this have a value of one for the third one we want this to have a value of 180 degrees in the z-axis and we just want to call this left and we want this to have a value of two for the fourth one we want this to have a value of 135 and we just want to call this back left and we want this to have a value of three for the fifth one, we want this to have a value of 90 degrees and we want to call this back and we want this to have a value of four. 
for the sixth one we want this to have a value of 45 and here in the print string we want to call this fat right and we want this to have a value of five for the seventh one we want this to have a value of zero and we just want to call this right and we want this to be number six for this final one we want to make this have a value of minus 45 and we want to call this front left and we want this to have a value of seven okay so like i said i did all the calculations so i made sure everything is correct and the final thing we want to do is just connect um these greater than and equal nodes to the relevant set relative rotations and set flip books and that will just make it so the enemy is facing the correct direction depending on where the player character is so for this first one we want to connect this all the way to the one at the very top here and then just double click somewhere and connect this equal sign into here for the second one we want to connect this to the fourth one here so i'm actually just going to select all these nodes and move them up a bit and we just want to connect this one into the back left one here and again double click and connect the equal sign into here for this third one, we want to connect it to the third one here. So we'll just hook up from here into here. And again, double click and connect the equal sign into here. For this final one, we want to connect it to the second one here. So connect from here into here. And again, just double click and connect from equal sign into here. And for this less than sign, connect it into the one at the top here. Okay, so that's half of them. Okay, so for this first one here, we want to connect this to the one at the very end. Okay, whoops, I think I pasted one more than necessary, so I'm just going to delete this. So the one at the very end is the front left one. So we want to connect from here into the front left one. And we just want to double click here and connect this into here. For the second one here, we want to connect this to this one here, so the one, two, three. The fourth one from the bottom. I will double click again here and connect this into here. For this third one, we want to connect it to the one, two, the third one up from the bottom. Again, I'll double click here and connect into here. And then for this last one, we want to connect it into the second one from the bottom here and again I'll double click and connect into here and then for this final one here we want to just connect this into the bottom sorry that's kind of a bit messy it's kind of hard to kind of make this system in another way but this basically allows us to have an eight directional system so now if I go compile save this and close and I go play we can see it's front stringing left, and I can see my enemy's left sprite. If say I go here, I see it's front right sprite. If say I go here, I see it's front sprite. If I go here, I see it's front left sprite. I see it's right sprite. I see it's back right sprite. And then I see it's back sprite. So pretty cool. We can have an eight directional um, sprite. So that's all for this video. And if you want to learn even more about how to create a full retro FPS game inside Unreal Engine, check out my Unreal Engine Retro FPS course. Link will be in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed, like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.